Good day, everyone. I will be presenting my work on resource allocation in fog-enabled 5G networks. And this work was co-supervised by Professor Luzango Mfupi from the CSIR and Professor Ulutai from VITS. I will briefly take you through what my presentation will cover. First, I'll introduce 5G and how fog computing fits into the 5G architecture. Then I'll define the problem statement and list the study objectives. After describing the proposed resource allocation approach, I will present the key research findings. And finally, I'll conclude the presentation with a summary of future work. We begin with an overview of the evolution of wireless technologies. Initially, we had the first generation, 1G, which only allowed voice calls. Then 2G enabled data capabilities, were able to view videos with the third generation. And finally, the current 4G, which is IP based, provides higher data rates than 3G. Fifth generation 5G networks are the next step of revolution in mobile communications and will be more than just an enhancement of the current 4G. Instead, 5G will support a wide range of unprecedented services and applications ranging from enhanced mobile broadband with high data rates, ultra-reliable and low-latency communication, and massive machine-type communication, also known as the Internet of Things or simply the IoT. In addition, 5G will provide higher capacity, lower cost and lower energy consumption than the current 4G. Fog computing complements and extends the traditional cloud computing model by bringing the computation functions to the edge of the network, closer to where data is generated, in order to lower the burden on the front hall and to meet the demands of ultra-low latency applications. In addition to improving latency and reducing network bandwidth bottlenecks, the network costs for configuring a fog network are substantially lower than those of a cloud network. And this makes fog computing an efficient solution for underserved areas, which are often identified by a lack of adequate broadband infrastructure. In the 5G architecture, fog computing is introduced in the form of fog radio access network, or FRAN, as a means to meet the demands of massive IoT applications and the traffic that they generate, which the conventional cloud-only model is unable to deal with. Over here, we look at an architecture of FRAN, and what differentiates it from the cloud computing model is the fog layer in the middle, which introduces edge devices that are embedded with computing, storage, control, and networking capabilities. And these edge devices are widely distributed between the 5G core network and the IoT layer. According to our literature review, conventional approaches to the resource allocation problem in FRANs are static mechanisms in which a fixed amount of resources is allocated when the network is configured. However, FRAN resources are heterogeneous and dynamic in nature, and IoT applications are becoming increasingly more complex, and this makes these static mechanisms insufficient. Therefore, there's a need for dynamic resource allocation methods that can predict changes in the workload and autonomously adjust resources accordingly. And this formed the basis of our study objectives, which were to design such a dynamic resource allocation technique and to evaluate its performance in a simulated network. This is our proposed resource allocation framework. And over here, we see the architecture of fog nodes in the framework. The request manager handles all incoming requests and forwards them to the decision maker which then keeps track of all the available computing resources. And in our case, that will be the number of CPU cores. And it then makes a decision on whether to allocate or deallocate these resources by implementing the reactive auto-scaling algorithm. The scheduler uses an earliest deadline for a strategy to allocate requests to be executed. This is our proposed resource allocation algorithm, and it begins with the request manager checking whether the node can support edge services. And if so, a request is sent to the user for the application details. And these include the size of the sensor data to be processed, the priority level, 
the minimum processing density and the maximum tolerable latency of the application. Otherwise, if the node cannot support edge services, then the request manager, manager can terminate its fog server. If a, low, if a new request has a lower priority than the FOG servers that are currently processing, then that request is rejected and also new requests can be rejected if there are insufficient resources. If the specified minimum resource requirement is higher than the available resources, then all the FOG servers on the node are offloaded to the cloud. Otherwise, the autoscaler checks if the node can process the task within the specified latency objective. And if the computed network latency of the application is higher than the specified latency objective, then more resources are allocated to the FOG node. Otherwise, the last node and the priority queue will be terminated and the resources freed up for other high priority nodes. The autoscaling, uh, the autoscaling process ends when the FOG server is updated with the modified resource allocations. The system model that we considered is composed of UEs, 5G base stations, FOG nodes, and cloud data servers. The UEs connect to the FOG nodes through wireless communication links using 5G base stations while the FOG nodes can access servers in the cloud data center using fiber optic communication. The model incorporates the architecture of 4G LTE and 5G new radio, with the LTE eNode B being deployed as the master eNode B and the new radio eNode B as the secondary eNode B. The network functions in the system are softwareized and run on isolated virtual machines. As part of the performance evaluations, we compared the proposed system, which implements a reactive autoscaling algorithm, against two alternative systems that used autoscaling algorithms and one system that used a threshold based scaling algorithm. And these were the results that we found. For the first experiment, we looked at the effects of latency requirements and cost efficiency. And cost efficiency was a measure of the percentage of users that receive their services within the specified services latency requirement. We had five classifications of maximum tolerable latency, where ultra low was for applications that had a maximum tolerable latency of less than one millisecond. Low was a maximum of 10, medium was 100, high was 150, and mixed was randomly selected between 0 and 150 milliseconds. The graph represents the effect of maximum latency requirements and cost efficiency, and as we can see here, the applications that have very strict latency requirements are less cost efficient than the ones that are more tolerable. We can also see from the graph that systems one, two, and three, which used auto scaling algorithms, perform better than system four, which was the fixed threshold technique. The proposed algorithm, which is implemented in system one, achieved an optimal efficiency of 100% for applications that had high latency requirements and it performed fairly well for low and medium latency requirements. However, improvements should be considered for dealing with applications that have ultra low latency requirements. For the second experiment, we looked at the impact of network traffic load on the latency. And as we can see from the graph, the end-to-end -end delay in fulfilling a request increases with an increase in network traffic load. Because as the need for computational resources grows, the FOG nodes become increasingly more constrained and more and more resources are offloaded to the cloud for processing. The proposed system, which is system one, appeared to use resources more efficiently and it performed better than the other three systems in terms of network latency.
for the final experiment, we calculated the user probability, user satisfaction probability, which is a measure of the ratio between the achieved throughput and the maximum achievable throughput. As we can see from the graph, which shows the user satisfaction probability as a function of network workload, and this is represented by the number of users, all the four systems initially showed a high probability, which started to, to deteriorate as the number of users increased. However, the rates at which the models decline differ significantly. And as we can see from here, system one, which is the proposed one, showed better results than the other three systems. As a summary of our findings, our proposed framework always manages to allocate resources and time in order to guarantee the continuous satisfaction of applications low latency requirements under dynamic workloads. Another finding is that the proposed algorithm allows all users to receive their services within the specified services latency objective. And finally, we found that the proposed algorithm performs very well for high, late, for high latency applications. However, improvements should be considered for ultra low latency applications. In conclusion, we presented a dynamic resource allocation technique based on reactive auto scaling and an architecture for the algorithm to be implemented. The proposed algorithm performs better than the fixed threshold technique and other scaling mechanisms. However, we found that reactive resource management techniques are suboptimal solutions to resource allocation in future IoT networks, especially when considering the cost efficiency for ultra low latency applications. As part of our future work, we will evaluate the proposed approach against machine learning algorithms, as well as hybrid solutions, which would be a combination of proactive and reactive mechanisms. Secondly, another enhancement will be to evaluate the proposed technique in a real world network, such as a test bed. And finally, in addition to CPU cores, we will consider network resources and other computing resources like disk storage and memory. And that marks the end of my presentation. Thank you all for your time. I'll now open up the floor for questions and comments.